Hey everyone! This week's video is going to be a little bit different because we're going to be putting a lot more focus on the enemy laner since they get destroyed by Jensen on a smurf in low diamond. A lot of the mistakes made are very common in all elos diamond and below so everyone can benefit. Also, we're going to have the scoreboard up so you can see items and CS, especially since items played a bigger role than usual in this game. And lastly, as always, the concepts in this video apply to almost any mid lane champion, so don't worry if you don't play the ones here. Anyways, let's get started by breaking down the matchup to create a game plan for both players. We have Jensen playing Cassiopeia versus Lissandra. Cass has more extended trade damage and more range, while Lissandra has the wave care advantage and burst trade advantage. The way this matchup goes usually, Lissandra has the wave control and Cass has the trading advantage. So Lissandra used her wave clear and Cassio's lack of early mana to shove the wave and prevent Cass from getting to trade. Knowing this, Jensen's game plan will be as follows. Mission 1, Harass hard early on. Cassio Q is great for harass in the early levels. It doesn't draw minion aggro and has a really low cooldown. Mission 2, Bully Lissandra off the wave. If Cass lands enough harass early on, she can try to push Lissandra off the wave to prevent her from pushing. Mission 3, Freeze. Lissandra should be pushing early on, so if Cassio can bully her off the wave, she can freeze it and put Lissandra in a dangerous spot. In mission 4, force them to recall or overstay. Once it's frozen, Cass wants to look for all ins if Lissandra overstays or force her to take a bad recall. Alright, now let's create Lissandra's game plan. Mission 1, push the wave. Lissandra has the wave clear advantage, so she wants to push the wave to get a minion lead. Mission 2, play around your minion advantage. Lissandra needs to use her minion advantage to help her win trades since Cassio E draws minion aggro. And mission 3, fully crash the wave and use mid priority to get vision or help your jungler. Lissandra isn't really a solo kill champion, she's best used to clear the wave and do other things around the map. This isn't specific to her though, any champion can clear the wave to get mid priority and do other stuff, she just excels at it. Alright, now that we have both players game plan, let's get into the gameplay. Before laning even starts, let's talk about starting items because Lissandra's Dark Seal start is very, very bad. You should never start Dark Seal on any mid lane champion. It's an item you get on your first or second recall because Doran's Ring or Corrupting Potion are the main two starting items. The main reason being that Dark Seal makes you really, really easy to kill. Doran's Ring is really good because it makes you do more damage to minions, making CSing easier and gives you a longer window to get it without being pressured. And it gives health, which is crucial for early laning, especially against a strong laner like Cassio or Syndra. Corrupting Potion can be taken if you want a lot of sustain and will be taking or dishing a lot of poke. It's very common to take Corrupting Potion versus melee matchups like Kasten, Fizz, or Echo because it gives extra damage on auto attacks and gives you a lot of mana to keep spamming. In this game, Lissandra should have started Doran's Ring. Anyways, that might have been a bit boring, but I see way too many lower elo players start with Dark Seal. But let's actually start the laning phase now. Jensen is starting missions 1 and 2 looking for harass and already zoning Lissandra off the wave while Lissandra is playing really safe and scared and uses her Q to grab some CS. Do you see anything wrong with Lissandra's gameplay in these first 15 seconds? What she's doing is one of the most common mistakes in lower elos. We want you to try to think about what it is as it will happen all throughout the lane and we'll come back to it later in the video. Moving on, Jensen collects his own CS, waits for Lissandra to go for a last hit, and uses that to make it easy for him to land his Q. Then Lissandra continues to run, giving Jensen the opportunity to use his range advantage to hit another Q. Jensen now has full control of the lane and is pushing, meaning Lissandra has failed mission 1. Jensen waits for Lissandra to go for another last hit, and lands another easy Q for more harass. They both hit level 2, and since Jensen has way more damage and health than Lissandra, he's positioning very aggressively and zoning her off the wave while still making sure to grab his own CS. Jensen takes his time when no minions are low to go ward since the lane is going so well, he knows he's going to keep playing aggressive and doesn't want to throw his lane to a gank. His jungler is top river giving him vision, so he puts his ward on bottom side. When he gets back to laning, Jensen does the same simple thing that he's been doing, using Q on Lissandra when she goes for a last hit. This time, Lissandra is way too far up giving Jensen a window to all in. And on top of that, she actually runs toward Jensen to use Q before running away, which lets Jensen use Ignite and two more E's for an easy solo kill. After that, Jensen shoves the wave in and recalls while Lissandra TPs to lane. While he's on the way back to lane, let's zoom in on the minimap and speed things up. Lissandra does something really really bad here. 
Even though she gave up a solo kill, she had teleport, which means she'll only be down by about 300 gold, but she can actually get a small experience lead here by coming to lane and hard shoving the wave with her strong wave clear since Cass needs to recall. This is the case whenever you have TP. You will always be able to get a minion wave lead of experience by punishing their recall. This would make Lissandra's early solo kill not as bad as usual, but since she didn't push the wave before helping her jungler with the Xin Zhao invading, the wave stacks up and starts slow pushing towards Jensen. This is extremely bad for her, as now she's going to be even or behind in experience against a Cassio with an early lead. Jensen gets back to lane and has a free setup for him because of that big mistake Lissandra made. The wave is kind of big though, so he thins it out a little bit. This kind of wave management mistake will happen very often in lower ranks. Learning how to punish it is the important part. Let's see how Jensen does it. He moves up and completely zones Lissandra away from the wave because he knows how much stronger he is and that she has no clue what she's doing. This is the beauty of a freeze. If you're stronger than the enemy, a freeze can snowball your lead almost as hard as solo kills do because of how much CS and experience you can deny them. The next wave is here now though. He doesn't want to take too much damage from that, so he backs up to let it aggro his own wave. Now that the waves are attacking each other, he goes back to pressuring and makes sure Lissandra eats a Q for the CS that she got. Jensen then elects to break his freeze and start pushing, although we're not entirely sure why. He could hold this freeze and get Lissandra really behind, but we think it's because he wants to harass her under tower and go for tower plating since that's a viable way to push his lead even further. He stacks up a big wave and crashes it on the tower. Then he harasses her every time she goes for a CS, just like before, dropping her to 40% health and no potions left. At this point, this is her best time to recall. The next wave is a cannon wave, so it will take a lot longer to die to the tower, and if she stays any longer, Jensen can easily dive her. Jensen assumes she is recalling and starts hard pushing the wave. Then Lissandra shows back up in lane. This is obviously trolling really hard, but remember this is diamond and 99% of players would be losing lane this hard and I have no idea how to handle it. But as expected, Jensen flashes in with his ult, easily kills Lissandra, but dies to Zach jumping over Raptor's wall. He now has 2 kills with 49 CS to Lissandra's 20 CS. It's safe to say this lane is over. Alright, so that seemed like Lissandra couldn't do anything, right? Every time she went for CS, Jensen just used Q, no counterplay. Remember earlier, we said to try and think about the big mistake Lissandra was making that was one of the most common ones in lower ranks? If Lissandra didn't make this mistake, this miserable lane could have easily been prevented. The mistake was playing the lane to survive it and not to win it. When you sit back and just try to go for last hits from afar, a good player won't give you a single one without punishing, like we saw Jensen do. So at level 1, if we go back to those first 15 seconds, what should have Lissandra done here? Let's move over to the sandbox to visualize it. All she had to do was simply keep a minion between her and Cassio, so whenever Cassio walks up to use a spell, Lissandra can use Q to trade and push at the same time, which would have completed mission 1, got her the minion lead, denied Cass level 2 spike, and prevented the early solo kill altogether. But since she played way too scared, she gave complete control of the lane over to Jensen, and he abused it as any challenger player would, and completely destroyed this lane. Alright, that's going to be it for this video. Let us know if you like the style as any feedback is appreciated. And as always, thanks for watching.